we'll even get into 12 4. Um, 12.3 is on the, the dot product. I do want to put down the dot product equation that you'll see. Well, it's on the form sheet, but if we're going to find that very useful, <coughs> is A dot B is equal to the magnitude of vector A, the magnitude of vector B times the cosine of A. All right, that's a dot for dot product. And the dot product is still. We don't have to write the formula down for computing a dot product, right? Like when we did before, right here in the last class, if we had to dot this vector with this vector, what would we get? So this is vector A, this is vector T, and we took the dot product A dot D. We get a scalar value, right? Mm -hmm. We get a scalar. We just do one times two plus negative three times one, negative three plus two times zero, right? And that's how you do a dot product. That times that plus that times that plus that times that. And if it's two dimensional, all right, that times that plus that times that. It's great. Usually you could do it in your head, right? I'm just gonna do this. Right. <coughs> what is the dot product? One times two plus. Negative three times one. I'm writing it all out, but I've got everyone in this group right now, this room, can just do all this in their head. What do you get for the final answer? It's a negative one. So dot products can be negative. I wanted to point that out at first. I don't want you to think dot products always come up to be positive, but it's not a vector, is it? All right. But this is a wonderful, wonderful equation that we're going to use throughout this course. To <coughs> start. Oh my God. There's one that looks like this with the cross product. Cross product is what we covered in section 12.4. Maybe we should write it right on the So this is the dot product of two vectors. But well, why is this important? Number one, it can tell us about two vectors that are perpendicular to each other at 90 degrees, right? See, uh, what's the cosine of 90 degrees? With theta, by the way, in that formula, one, theta is the angle between the two vectors. What's the cosine of 90? Once. Cosine of 90 is zero, zero just right. right? The cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So that's telling us that the dot product of two orthogonal vectors, if you want to use the word orthogonal, if you like perpendicular, that's fine too. But two vectors that are perpendicular to each other or orthogonal will always be what? Zero. So that's important. Like A dot B equals zero. Well, that means vectors A B are one of each, how you that perpendicular symbol, right? The upside down, they're going to be orthogonal, orthogonal vectors. So okay. if my key statement, if A dot B is zero, then they're orthogonal. That's right, okay. that's right. If A is orthogonal to B, then A dot B will always have to be zero. Really? Are these two vectors orthogonal to each other? No. no. We just saw it. Um, how about those two vectors? I mean, these are in three dimensional space. We're not even drawing them, but <coughs> the angle between those two vectors 90 degrees. It'd be 90 degrees because the dot product is 2 plus negative 2 plus 0 equal what? 0. So these two vectors are orthogonal to each other. The last two, they were not orthogonal. Um, I'm curious about these two vectors, though. They're definitely not orthogonal. Um, two, three, four, vector B. Four, six, seven, eight. Can you tell me about these two vectors? They're definitely not orthogonal. Well, what are they? I heard it. What are they? Parallel. So how can we tell two vectors are just parallel to each other? This thing won't help us much, right? That was for perpendicular. But one will be a scalar multiple of the other. And that means you can think of this as what? This right here is two times vector A. And so that's how you can tell whether or not two vectors are running in the same direction and parallel to each other. If one is a scalar multiple of the other. And 
that means if this helps, <coughs> that means all the ratios between the corresponding components should be equal, right? So if that helps, look at the ratios. You want to know the parallel? Two vectors parallel. All the ratios should be equivalent. Let's look at it. Is 2 over 4 equal to 3 over 6 equal to 4 over 8? Yes. And so these two vectors are parallel. So no matter how they write it, that's how you can tell whether or not two vectors are parallel to each other. In 3D, you got to do slope, right? That's right. The slope will be important, Art. And especially in 3D, but what's great with these vectors is we'll always use vectors to help us identify things like this. Whether or not you got one, vectors running parallel, you know, perpendicular. Remember when we did what, the college algebra course? Uh -huh. It was like they said, oh, you had to do like um, one slope was three halves, the other slope was what? Negative two thirds. But that's because everything was nice in two dimensional space. We had a light was mx plus b. I and mean, today, if we get into it, section 12.5 does deal with straight lines that are three dimensional and lines going through three dimensional space. But again, what we'll look at is, we won't look at that M, we're going to use the vectors. And we'll use this concept, this, this concept that vectors perpendicular or orthogonal have a dot running to zero. Okay, so this is really important. What else is important about this formula? This allows us to find angle between two vectors. Oh, that's huge. So this formula right here allows us to determine what is the angle between two vectors. So let's try that. Um, here's a vector, 2, 4, 1. Here's another vector, negative 3, 2, 0. And I was wondering, these are in three dimensional space, right? Mm -hmm. These are three dimensional vectors. What is the angle between these vectors? We'll use this. It won't be hard, but we should rearrange that formula and solve for theta. Can you do that? Well, let's just see. What would cosine theta equal to? It? A dot B over the magnitude of A, magnitude of B. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might write that as a separate formula in your notes. And that's what cosine theta always equals to. But let's improve that. I want you to find the angle between the two vectors. <coughs> So first you do the dot product on the numerator, then calculate the magnitude and multiply. And there you go, inverse cos. So very good. I'm going to put the and just stick all this in there. Right. Let's start out. What is A dot B? Negative 6 plus 8 plus 0. Is that a 2? Does everyone agree for A dot B? Mm -hmm. What's the magnitude of it? This is good. So we're all going, oh, this is stuff from yesterday. How do you get the length of this vector? 21. So you yeah, do the square root of that square plus that square plus that square. We have a little square root. Square root of what? 21. All right. 21. Put a hat on it. And then I'll put a just multiplication sign if you want. Not a dot product, just you know a star or multiplication. Nine, what's the length of the other vector? Thirteen. Yep, magnitude squared is nine plus four plus zero squared is the square root of thirteen. Thirteen. Um, let's type this in our calculators. Let's put it in degree mode. So does anyone know how to change it to degree mode? I want to point out, you know why I kept this in? I always try to avoid as many parentheses as possible. If you put a parentheses here, doesn't your calculator automatically put a parentheses here? I mean, you got to end it. You put one here, then you got to what? Close it. This is how I type it in if you're curious. I'll do this. 2 division square root. But on my calculator, before I type this in, I'll just figure out what the heck is 21 times 13. So what is, what, is, I'm just, what is 21 times 13? I'll just make one radical. What is that? Second, the older, older TID4 model. Some of you have the upgraded cool TID4 where it like puts it in math print mode. I don't have math print mode. So this is how I'm safe. I'll, I'll type it like that. You've got to get a close that parenthesis. 
So as long as I type it like that, I'm going to check my mode, everyone. Oops, I was in radian mode. I'm going to change it to degree mode. And I'm going to hit inverse cosine at the second cos. And then a two. Division. Square root. 273. What do you all get? What's the angle? It's about 83 degrees. I'll squiggle. Right. Not 90, close to 90, but this is throughout this course when you're like trying to find an angle between two vectors, reflect on that. Go, Wait, I know it. There's a way to get this. I'm just going to play it like that. Cool. All right. Um, well, that's pretty cool. So we can find the angle between two vectors. But I'm, I'm looking at this. This is a problem like the problem from the practice set. What if you gave you three points, which forms a triangle? How could you find like one of the angles in there? Okay. So this is like number seven from here. You go, well, which one from the textbook? Eh. From the textbook, when you're asking for the angle between the two vectors, they actually put a problem like this. Oh, it was in section 12.4. But you'll see it. So let me just make up some points here. Uh, how about 0, 1, 2? Or that's a point. We can call it point P. Point Q. What? 7, 9, and then a 16. And then point R. Okay, point R is, let's see, 1, Five nine. Can you find the interior angle between vectors P Q and P R? That's the question. Can you find the interior angle between vector P Q and P R? So looking at a picture, and we're talking about like there's P Q, there's P R. Not drawing the scale. But can we use that formula? You bet. We'll use it. What's the magnitude of PQ? Oh, wait. Before I even start, what is vector PQ? I apologize. <clears throat> to go from points to vectors, vec points sometimes look like vectors. Don't let that confuse you. I have to find the vectors first, right? Mm -hmm. So, what are the points? Here's so one, two, seven, nine, sixteen. Tip minus tail. Mm -hmm. All right, what's vector P? Negative seven. Negative. Seven. No, negative, right? Well, if I do well, tip minus tail, seven minus, tail, minus, yeah. seven minus zero. zero. So yeah. I got you. You were doing vector QP. P, well, yeah. Seven minus zero. Yeah. Nine P. minus one. And sixteen minus two. Is that fourteen? Mm -hmm. All right, what's PR? One, four, seven. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I made this up. We didn't get any negative values. I mean, sometimes we can get the negatives, right? So there's those. Now, what are these magnitudes? Seven squared plus eight squared plus fourteen squared. What's the magnitude of the all? One squared plus four squared plus seven squared. But I'm still going to find this angle to be inverse cosine. The dot product of the two vectors times the magnitude of that and magnitude of that. Um, if you don't mind, do you let me know what that number is under the radical? That's pretty big. <laughs> Woo! 49, 64, and 196. <laughs> Ooh, thanks. And then the other one? Oh, we can do that. What's 49, 50, 50 plus 16? 66. Cool. Now, what's the dot product? 7 plus 32 plus what's that? 98? What's that come out to be? 137? 137. Give us the actual angle. 
Now, you don't have to enter that on the calculator now, but do you agree? That's how we'd go to find that interior angle. It was using this powerful formula right here, this little equation, to say I'll get the dot product of the two vectors, I'll get the magnitude of each vector. What was key though, we had to get the what? Figure out the vectors from the points first. Excellent. Hey, um, I don't think we have to work out this problem, but we can talk about it. A problem on this worksheet. They asked about this. I want you to just explain to me what to do. Number nine. They go, which of the following vectors is orthogonal to both A and B? I mean, what's one thing you could check in all the A, B, C, D, and A? Check to see which ones have dot products of what? Zero. Zero. Great. I do want to point out you're going to learn something today in 12.4. You might find it easier to work that problem. If you're like, I don't feel like checking all these out with the cross product. But right now, you know that dot product of two vectors equals zero means they're orthogonal, right? Mm -hmm. You could just go through them all and check them. We do have to talk about number eight, though, however, which deals with the vector projection. So I want to talk about that. So something emerges in this section 12.3. C-O-M-P. B with an A here, and this is called the component of B along A. I'll even write it over here too. Component of B along A. It equals A dot B over the magnitude of A. That's what it's equal. I'm going to draw a picture so you can make sense of what this would look like. First of all, the component of B along A, that's what it's called, it's a scalar value. You all agree. Look at the formula. Mm -hmm. It's a scalar. All right. So that's a scalar value. It's just a number. I, I do want to point out, because dot products can be negative, this answer can be negative. True. So I just want to be careful and just let you know that that can come out to be a negative value. If you wanted an image of what it kind of represents, all right. Let's just say this was vector <coughs> A right here, and this was vector B. And I'm going to drop 90 degrees here from the tip of B onto A. Now I know this would be all positive, these vectors. This right here, everyone, this length right here in this image would represent component B on your back. Okay? It would give the actual length of this in this image. If you took vector B, took that tip, just thought about dropping 90 degrees, the length from here to here, as you can tell, wouldn't be quite as long as vector A, but that's what that component would find through. You have to prove it now, but I bet everyone in this class could prove that. You know, just using trigonometry and that formula up there. See that dot product? You know what cosine? What's cosine of theta and a triangle? So katoa. I bet you can prove that. You can show that. You'd be like, yep, this would come out true. Well, we don't have to do it now. You'd be like, yeah, that's a theta. Cosine theta is what? Jason over I. Hypotenuse. You could use this right here to show this that this length would be represented by them. Cool? But you have to do it now. I just want to point that out. So that's called component of B along A, vector B, vector A, almost like a shadow, right? It's like a shadow. That's a scalar. Now there's something also called a vector projection. So a vector projection, they use PROJ, B on to that. And I'll get that formula right here. Let's vector projection P R O J B on to A. This is a vector. I don't care if in your notes you drew a you want to put a big vector. <laughs> you want to do something like that. This is a vector where this was a scalar. A vector projection is a vector. Alright? And you go, what is it? Well in this case, everyone, it's that vector right here. That's it. That's the vector we're talking about. The component represented its length in that image. 
but the vector projection would represent the vector that got projected from B onto A, almost like a shadow, as this got projected down that one. So is the, the, is the formula the same? It's almost identical. I'm going to put it in words first. It stems off component. So that's what he means. Almost good art that it's like similar. It's very similar. <coughs> it's going to be equal to this length right here times a unit vector in the direction of that. Huh. That's all of it. So I'll put that down. It's just going to be what? This component of the end of A, that number, multiplied to a unit vector in which direction? In the direction of vector, which one? The A. The one that's underneath. Now I put that in words. That's how I remember it. So that you don't have to remember a whole new stinking formula. <laughs> but can we clean it up and make it look pretty? And then I'll write it over there. Well, what is this then? That's a dot b over what? Magnitude of n? Okay, that's that. That's that number. What's the unit vector in the direction of vector a? We did that yesterday. That's the it was one over vector a magnitude times vector what? Yeah. There you go. So it's all that. There's the answer. But this is how I remember. Take the component multiplied by a unit vector in the direction of vector. But that's what it is, right? Hey, can you make that even prettier? Yeah, what's, these are the same. So can I just do that squared? So that's, I'm going to write it over here. I'm going to write this as a dot b all over the magnitude of a squared times vector a. You don't have to put the parentheses, but I will. I want that, that number, that's just a scalar value in front, and then vector right. Isn't that a vector, A dot B? Yeah, so I'll put vectors on top of that, thanks. I'll put little arrows. But this right here already is a square. Okay. I thought I would just take that and say, all right, that magnitude, whatever it is, square. <coughs> Dot P. 
What's in the denominator? Which one's squared? This one. So I'm going to accept this length squared. So what is the length of? 29. P. Oh. I sort of dot product, meaning we're just going to dot them. Let's see what we get. All right, what's the dot product of PQ and PR? Well, I mean vector P2. That's vector PR. What was vector P2? What's that vector? Tip minus tail, 2 minus 0. Uh -huh. 1 minus 1. 3 minus 1. Is that 2, 0, 2? Yeah? What's the dot product of this? Seven. 10 plus 0 plus 0. You all get 10? Yes. There's the dot product. Now we need to get the length of PR and then square it. Which really means, if you want, just pull off the radical, right? There you go. So what's 5 squared plus 2 squared? 29. Square root 29. Square root 29 squared becomes just what? 29. Well, there's the dot product, PQ dot PR, dot in each of them. There's the magnitude of PR squared, radicals off, and then what's vector PR? Can you leave the answer like this unless you want to distribute it? There you go. So it's 1029. It wasn't the full length. What's that? Now, can you do me a big favor in your notes? Can you draw what this vector would look like? What would this vector look like? Where would it be in a second? It would be the shadow of PQ shadowed onto what? Yeah. I'll do this. It's not that vector. By the way, there is a name for that vector. <laughs> it's this vector right here. There it is. I'm just going to put that PROJ PQ onto PR. That's the vector you found. In terms of that image. Probably not drawing scale, but. That's what it would look like. Just so you know, it's really like, it's like a projection. Like that projector over there. Oh. So put, oh yeah, projection is a, a vector, yeah. Number eight from the practice set I'm looking, they just want you to find a vector projection, nothing crazy. That's all right. Um, before we go into section 12.4, there's one more formula we need to know. But it deals with this again. It's work. <laughs> Before your class, teaching count two it was a big topic today. We're finding work on all these different problems. But with us, we're just like, isn't work equal to force times distance? But it's also equal to F dot D. Force vector dot this displacement vector, okay? So, work is f dot d, but it's also equal to what? Now that we got this, what's another way to write it? I'll put it right underneath it. What's another way to write work? We know work is the dot product between the force and this distance. So, basically like a... Magnitude, magnitude of, of what? Force, magnitude of right, distance. Magnitude of force. Magnitude of distance. Displacement. Magnitude of distance, I'll just go like that. And then the cosine of the what? Cosine of the angle between. So on that note, everyone, I would like to do a problem like number 10. Now this is in section 12.3. Eh, so I'm going to use number 50. Number 10, it was a, a wheelbarrow. So everyone, I'm going to use number 50, which is a tow truck. This is number 50. This is in 12.3. The question. Let me read it to you. A tow truck drags a stalled car along the road. A tow truck drags a stalled car along the road. The chain makes an angle of 30 degrees with the road, and the tension in the chain is 1,500 newtons. Okay, I'm going to draw a picture. 30 degrees there. Here's the car. And the tension is 1,500 newtons. And this truck's just towing this thing, right?
How much work is done by the truck in pulling the car a distance of one kilometer? So we got to find the work done to pull this truck. The tens there's the tension in the road, and we're going to go a distance of one kilometer, which is how many meters? One total. So I'm going to make this 1,000 meters. Just so, just like we're doing today in my Cal 2 class, we write work in either foot pounds, but if it's in the metric system, with newton meters, we can just use what starts with the gen? Joules. Joules. Yes, yeah, so we can just write it in joules. So I'll make that 1,000 meters. Let's do it. What's the work done? Work equals F dot D. What was the force? 1,500. So I'm going, I'm going to write it this way too. It's the magnitude of that, 1,500 equals. Magnitude of that distance, that's the length, it was 1,000 meters. 1,000 meters, and what was the angle? 10 degrees. Those sign of it. So what's the final answer? 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go sign of 30. We're going to 3 over. 2. 2. And I heard the units just work. No. Okay, I'll put a column. I'll put a column. 1.5 million times the square root of 3 over 2. Does 2 go into 1.5 million? Yes. Yeah, yeah, at least, least I can reduce it a little bit. 750,000. 750,000. That'll look a little better. All right. 750,000 square root 3 J. That's the work necessary for that. This problem is easier than the Calc 2. I know! <laughs> Anybody remember work in Calc 2? Yeah. I, spent, I spent, I think, close to an hour. I'm still not done with the lesson. <laughs> We're like, all right, we looked at the, we did the rope, we did the spring, we did the funny looking circular swimming pool, but tomorrow I got to do the triangular trough and the, the pool that looks like a, when, it, when there's a tank that looks like a sphere. Because everything changes in terms of those slices that we're going to sum up. But you're right, it's like, uh, <laughs> when? Okay. Um, hey, eventually we get to one like number six, but then when we've done problems like, you know, seven through ten, we put all those. And uh, now it's time to enter 12.4. 12.4. The cross product. All right. Twelve point four is the cross product. Well, I can leave all that up there, just so you can compare, and I'll put it right here. Twelve point four cross. Okay. What's the cross product of two vectors? A cross B. I mean, I'm going to write this as a matrix. When you do A cross B, you've got to think of this as doing the determinant of some matrix. This will always come out to be a vector. So the cross product of two vectors is a vector. Well, let's talk further on that before we start drawing some of these. And I put the definition down how to find it. Um, let me just use some markers with some little tips on here. So when here's two vectors in this plane right here. That's vector A, that's vector B. I put them near each other, but they could be like apart like this. They could be like different here, here. So in this plane, right? Where is vector A cross B? If this is vector A, that's vector B. You know where vector A cross B is? Well, people are doing this right now. I so saw these two or three people go like that. Vector A cross B, all right, will be orthogonal to vector A and orthogonal to vector B. Well, like a parallelogram, oh. parallelogram right? Right? Yes, that's what we'll get to. We'll prove that, too. Well, let me just say this again. You know, what is the cross product of two vectors? Well, it is a vector, but that vector will be orthogonal to both of them. Now, if you're curious, well, they went like this. 
And what they're saying is that vector could be pointed up, right? But in some cases, the vector might be pointed what? Down. Down. So does anybody know how you know the difference? Minus. Right across B, there's something called the right hand rule. I don't know if you like it or not. I'm going to use the tips of my right hand. And if that's vector A and that's vector B, here I'll, I'll slide them next to each other like that. Let me make them a little closer. And I will take the tip of my finger in the blue marker, vector A, turns towards vector B, and I'm going to watch the arrow of my thumb. My thumb will point in the vector of A cross B. So which way is vector A cross B going? Up. So which way is vector B cross A going? Down. You got it. That's called the right hand roll. Right? That's the right hand roll. Can Just start the, with the vector and can, turn the other one. Can I turn to the uh, B cross A for a second? So yeah, so uh -huh. if this is A and that's B, and I use the right hand ruler, uh -huh. I'll use the tips of my fingers, start at A and curl towards vector B and just watch my thumb. My thumb will point in the direction of A cross B. Okay, here. But now, where will vector B cross A be? Okay. Wouldn't it have to be totally opposite? Uh -huh. And it's kind of weird, you're like, ugh. <laughs> it looks like that, it would be opposite direction. So A cross B and B cross A, just gonna be opposite vectors, aren't they? They'll have the same as they'll be opposite vectors. Well, to do this, we need a couple vectors. So let's just use, uh, how about vector A is one, two, and four. Vector B is, let's just use three, zero, negative two. I'm putting them in component form. And can we find A cross B? To do this, it's finding the determinant of a matrix. Don't worry if you've never worked with matrices before. But I'm even gonna write a matrix like this. We're gonna find the determinant. I, J, K, I'll just put that up in the top row. Because it's A cross B, I'm going to list vector A here. One, two, four, and then I'm going to put vector B here. And you'll see this on my formula sheet. That I said the determinant of A cross B will be vector A cross B. So what we're doing right now is we're going to find the determinant of this matrix. It's not hard to do without a calculator. Okay? So here's a matrix. We're going to find the determinant of this matrix. It will be A cross B. I just put I, J, K here. If you want to put little arrows on here, you can just. There's the components of vector A, there's the components of vector B. Here's you how you find the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. Does everyone know it's a 3 by 3 matrix? Mm -hmm. For the first component, this is what you do. And we'll do this all the time in our course. So get ready. If you've never done this before, you'll be doing this a lot. For the first component, I want you to wipe out the first column. And then do this times this, all right, minus this times this. Let me do it again with the this and the that. This times this minus this times this. So if you prefer, I've got like an A and a B and a C and a D. I need to find AD minus BC. When you hide, which column? First column. First column. And you go, what do we find? It's just called the determinant of a matrix, but it will give us this actual cross problem. So what's the first component? What's negative 4 minus <coughs> 0? Negative 4. Negative 4. You want to see that? I just want to point out what I did. I did 2 times negative 2 minus 4 times 0. If you want to write that out. You know, somebody might have to go, well, I've got to, it's the first time I ever did that. So you might hear, you might be writing, I get 2 times negative 2 minus 4 times 0, right? But I'm just going to repeat this process. Come down to the third component. Come all the way, let's go to the third one next. Professor Master, what are you doing? Come on down to the third, let's go down to the third component. For this component, wipe out which column? Third, third column. AD minus BC. 1 times 0 minus 2 times 3. Oh, so the component that we are trying to look for, you have to hide that component. That's right. And we repeat that. He says the component you're trying to find, you hide that column. And then, you know, you just deal with these four numbers, and it's always AD minus the product of BC. 
So what do you get for the third component? Zero, zero minus six, six is negative six. Right. Now, when I know we're looking at this with our eyes, I and mean, sometimes I get tired and I look at the wrong column, so I want to show you how we can check this and get some suggestions for the class. There's something about the definition of the determinant of the matrix. You got to be careful with the middle column. Do the same thing in the middle column, except change the final sign. Let me repeat that. Do the same thing. This is why I did this one last. Same thing, but your final result, I need you to change, change the sign or whatever you get. So I'll, I'll get a negative ready right now. So here I go. Wipe out the middle column. A, D. Negative 2. Minus B, C. What is negative 2 minus 12? Negative 14. So I get negative 14, but I said take the minus. star in opposite, right? And what's the opposite of negative 14? Plus 14. Now, because you and I were doing this in our head, mentally, and we wrote stuff on the paper, we're doing all this math, I highly recommend checking this. Because I could have looked at the wrong column, everyone. Or you heard this, when you do minus 12, minus 2, minus 5, I mean, we can accidentally add rather than subtract. Let's be careful. What's a way I can check? Let's go back. What's the definition of a vector? We said, well, it's always going to be what? A cross B, it will be perpendicular. So what should be the dot product of this vector and this vector? Zero. I would check it. Since we did all that math, dot products are easy to check. So here I go. Is negative 4 plus 28 plus negative 24 equals 0? And that's something you can do in your head. I know you can. Is that equal to 0? Yep. yep. I don't know how to explain yep. Is it yep or yep? Something like that, right? Yep. But also check this one too. I always check this real quick because I can check it really quick mentally. Is negative 12 plus 0 plus a positive 12 equal to 0. Now you're absolutely 100% sure you found the right cross product, right? You got it. And by the way, if that's A cross B, let me just write down here, what would B cross A be? It would just be, take all these and change the what? Wouldn't you just get this? Mm -hmm. Change the sign. Hey, on that note, the problem I was talking about on the last part, it said, it goes, which of the following vectors is perpendicular to both of these? You might find it easier to just get the cross product, right? So I wanted to reflect back to number nine. The question, which one of the following vectors is perpendicular to both of these? You might just go, let me get the cross product, because the cross product has to be what? Perpendicular to both of them. But you already had an approach, so feel free to do it that way. I don't know if I have it on the sheet, but I want you to be careful about one thing. I know there's a problem in the textbook with this. They go, they give you two vectors, and they go, can you find two vectors, right, that are orthogonal to this? Well, this is what we do, right? This would be one of them, this would be the other. But they, ended, they inserted the word unit vector. So let me say this again. The real question, it's in the book. I'll look to see if I have it on my sheet. But it's a textbook problem. They go, can you find two unit vectors that are orthogonal to both of these? The first step would be, do this, get your vectors, and then what would be the last step? Just turn them into what? Unit vectors. There you go. So I just want to point that out. So be, just be careful when you see that word unit. I don't, I'm looking right now over our practice set. I don't see it anywhere on the practice set where they did that. All right. Hey, well, let's keep going with this. Let's keep going with this. The cross product is huge. We know that A cross B is a vector. It's defined as the determinant of a matrix, right? So I can write the formula like this. It's I, J, K. But which components did I put first? The components of A, and then what did I put second? Mm -hmm. and maybe I'll just go like that. But it's always going to be that. I didn't write out the long one. This times this minus this times this. The book does that. I think it's easier if we just wipe out the columns and do it like we do a determinant. Okay, so I just write it like that on my sheet. But there's another formula that's like this. So I'm going to put it in yellow and put it right underneath this, okay? Here you go. What is the magnitude 
of A cross B. Alright, it looks like this, but I want to put a magnitude around it. It's equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of theta, where the angle theta is the theta, the angle between those two vectors. Doesn't it look like the other one? Mm -hmm. Just make sure you have a magnitude around the A cross B. So let me write that again. When the magnitude of A cross B is equal to magnitude of A, magnitude of B times the sine of what? Sine. Cool. Well, I was wondering if you could help me prove something. Can you help me prove? No oh, math proof. Don't worry, take a second. That when the magnitude of A cross B will equal the area of a parallelogram occupied by those two vectors. Oh, this won't take too long, so let's draw a picture. Of a parallelogram. Quick proof. Let's call this vector A. And let's call this vector B down here. Now when all parallelograms do have a height, we can just call the height H. And let's put an angle theta right there. Can you just help me prove that this magnitude of A cross B, I know it's equal to this, but can we use this theorem to help us prove that the magnitude of A cross B will be equal to this area of this parallel? Alright? Sure, we can do this. Uh, this involves a little trigonometry. Let me start with geometry. What's the area of a parallel? <laughs> Base <laughs> times. Hey, what's the base? B. Well, it would be the length of B, right? Uh -huh. So I'll put magnitude of B. What's the height? Hey, that's H. And we're getting closer. Can you help me substitute something for that H? That image? Do a little SOCOT tell off. I know. What's the sine of theta? What's the sine of theta? H it's H opposite H over... It. My pot needs, and I'll put a, I'll put a length for a length of A, right? So what's H equal to? H is the length of vector A times sine theta. Work out with this. I just want to show you, you can actually derive all this stuff. And look what we get. Ta-da! We're done. We're done our proof because we used that here. This is equal to the area of a what? Parallelogram. Cool. Hey, on that note, isn't every parallelogram just broken into two triangles? Mm -hmm. So what's the area of a triangle? Half the base into height. Same thing, but what do you got to divide? We can divide that by. Two over two. How many triangles in a parallel grid? Two. Two, right? There's vector A, there's vector B. It would just be the magnitude of A cross B divided by F. Two. So can we do one of those? Two. Can I give you three points? And from the three points, see, think about this. This is that problem you got. you got a younger brother. They're taking like an honors geometry class. And they're given something like this, and they're spending all this time on it. You might say to them, well, that problem's simple with vectors. <laughs> because of this. I mean, seriously. With vectors and cross products, it's easy to find things like, oh, that angle in three-dimensional space, or to find the area of a triangle in three-dimensional space. It's the way to go. So let's try that. Thanks for being with, you know, being patient with our nice little proof there. But the area of a triangle is this. So uh, let's see, we've got to pick three points. P, Q, and R. Um, what's this? That's 0, 1, 2. This is 3, 1, 1. And that's 2, 0, 3. Can you find the area of the triangle occupied by those three points? Okay, let's go find the area. I'll just these points all over the place in space. So what I'm saying is, in that Donna's geometry class, the students carefully plot these what? These points, and they're looking for maybe right triangles or something. 
right? Maybe they're trying to use law of signs or something like this. We're saying, heck, you need the area of this? Use vectors. Use vectors. So, uh, why don't you use vector PQ? What's that? What's vector PQ? PQ is 3. Just be careful, I always say this. Points look like vectors. <laughs> points look like vectors. Be careful, don't cross mm -hmm. points, true? That's right, go, oh no! You cross points, you cross points. PQ is what? 3, three 0, negative 1. Okay. What's PR? PR is 2, negative, negative one, 1, 1. Okay. And then, you got to cross these, huh? Uh -huh. So I'll just go like this. And then your I, J, and K, and there we go, let's cross them. Here comes P, Q, cross P, R. Right here. Ready to do this? What's zero minus one? Minus one? Zero minus a positive one. Come down to the third column. Come all the way down to the third column. What's negative three minus zero? Cool. What do you do in the middle column? Something special? Yeah, the change is not for negative three. Get that ready. Get it ready. Get ready. Change the sign. Change to do the same thing, but change the sign. Here's my yellow chalk. 